Mailbag time here on Falcons today. I'm answering questions during our live show, which airs every single Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. First question coming in from Kennedy Taylor. Uh, any chance the Falcons could be sleepers for Brandon Ayuk? I think pretty much every single team is wondering, like, all right, we don't need Brandon Ayuk necessarily, but could we get him because he's an all-pro wide receiver available? The answer is likely no. I don't want to say absolutely not because it is the NFL. Crazy stuff happens. Never say never. But I don't think the Falcons are at the top of the list of potential trade candidates for Brandon Ayuk. Now, I do want to remind everyone, Brandon Ayuk is a really freaking good wide receiver, okay? He had over 1,300 yards last year. He was a all-pro wideout in an offense that ranked 32nd in pass attempts. I mean, just think about how difficult that is for someone to be at the top of their position. That would like being a vegetarian winning a hot dog contest. Like, he's 32nd in pass attempts, and yet he's still one of the best wide receivers. Put him in an offense, which is likely going to be the Falcons' offense this year, that's going to pass the ball a lot, which is what Zach Robinson and the Rams did last year, what Kirk Cousins and the Vikings have done for so many years, and you give him more targets and he'll get you more production. So maybe that's where the Falcons sliver into the Brandon IU conversations, but to me, there just has been such a little buzz around the Falcons and IU. I'm not going to pretend like this is a likely chance of happening. Now, let me know, who is the most underrated wide receiver in football? I think Brandon Ayuk is definitely one of the most underrated wideouts in the NFL at the moment. Like I said, 32nd pass attempts to 49ers, 1,300 yards. Very difficult to accomplish those two things in the same season. To Falcony, do you think Micah Parsons or C.D. Lamb leaves the Cowboys this year or next and do you think there's a, any chance the Falcons go get one of them? I think if one were to leave, it would be Micah. It just kind of feels like there's been a little bit more motivation to get C.D. Lamb done compared to Micah. Now, there's been some like very loose reports out there that Micah's kind of wearing thin with the Cowboys. I'm not quite sure if people are putting that out there with an ulterior motive in mind. But I think if there were to be one, it would be Micah. And do I think there's a chance? I sure hope there's a chance. If Micah Parsons or CeeDee Lamb hits the open market, yeah, the Falcons should absolutely kick the tires on one of those two guys, especially Micah Parsons. It's not like they have a huge paycheck going to an edge rusher at the moment. You can devote a lot of cap space to Micah Parsons. Should the Falcons sign Eli Apple? I mean, Eli's going to bring some tenacity to the locker room. And... He's going to be a bit of a tone setter. He's going to be a shit talker. And I'm not in the Falcons locker room to know if they've got that type of presence. I don't think Eli Apple is someone you sign for his production alone, right? I think you sign Eli Apple because you kind of want a fourth liner, right? You want a guy coming off the bench that can be a bit of a tone setter. Do the Falcons have that right now on their roster? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not going to speak to it because I don't know the Falcons personnel on a personal level to know if that's someone that can carry the big stick and walk with it. So if they don't feel like they need a tone setter or a fourth liner, then they can pass on Eli Apple. Kyle Lindley, does Tyler Algier get traded before the trade deadline this season? I think Tyler Algier is a good back, right? 1,000 yards in his rookie season. I do think he can be very effective at the goal line in short yardage situations where Bijan may not be the best back for that type of circumstance. I believe we're going to see a much bigger disparity in usage between Bijan and Algier this year. I think the Falcons are going to give Robinson the ball a lot more when it comes to like split-wise between himself and Algier than Arthur Smith did last year. So if Tyler Algier all of a sudden is riding the bench because they want to force-feed Bijan Robinson and there's a team out there looking for a running back, it could be a win-win for both parties. The Falcons get something for someone that's just sitting on the bench for much of the game, and some other team gets a starting caliber running back. Like That could be an avenue that presents itself. I don't think the Falcons are going to be looking to trade Tyler Algier, but if October rolls around and B. John Robinson is just running with the football like, you know, like a crazy man, and Algier is just riding the bench, and some team calls and makes the Falcons an offer for Algier for a fourth, yeah, I bet the Falcons would take them up on that. Mason B, the Falcons need help in the wide receiver room. 
What are your thoughts on bringing Julio back? I'm not opposed to the idea because he is Julio Jones, and I think he'll always have a spot if wanted with the Falcons. I think people would be disappointed with the version of Julio Jones they are getting. Like We saw Julio last year in Philly. He had a couple of touchdowns before that in Tampa. Like You are not getting 2018 Julio Jones. And you may ultimately just kind of walk out with a bad taste in your mouth about Julio Jones at the end of his Falcons career, which was already a little bit going downhill before going to Tennessee. So from like a fan perspective of like Julio Jones, Falcons legend, maybe let him be his last, his last time in Atlanta be on top and not what he is right now. I think you may end up just hurting your own psyche and fandom for Julio Jones. So I do agree. Go get a wide receiver. Julio will be, you know, an awesome, like, story. I'm not quite sure if it'd work out in practice. Before we look at some other questions on today's episode, if you want to get some Falcons gear, go to chatsports.com slash Falcons combo. You can get these two T-shirts 25% off. It's not just one T-shirt, but two T-shirts 25% off. Chatsports.com slash Falcons combo. I put this link in the comments and description of today's video. Cap a lot of bussin. If you could trade for a wide receiver, who would it be? Good question. Um, I'll toss out one name. I'm not quite sure, like from a schematical fit, what it would look like. But what about Debo Samuel? If the 49ers extend Brandon Ayuk and plan to give Ricky Pearsall their first round pick from Florida a big role, and they need money from extending um, Brandon Ayuk. Maybe that makes Debo Samuel expendable. And for the Falcons, that would be a nice new wrinkle to their offense. I think that would give some flashes of Cordero Patterson from two years ago, right? You've got Drake London to work the boundary. But can you get a yak monster, a guy that can just run over people? That could bring a new flair to this offense. So I think Debo Samuel could be someone to watch for. Or not watch for, but a pick of mine when it comes to a wide receiver. Mark Smith, does Cousins see the field during the preseason? Good question. Probably not the first two weeks. I, I don't think it'll be a medical thing. I just think it'll be a let's just not risk it kind of thing, right? Even if they kind of had a healthy Kirk Cousins. I think you could see Kirk Cousins kind of have a dress rehearsal preseason week three for the first quarter. Give him two drives, maybe three drives, kind of go into the second quarter and call it a day. I think they have been very impressed and very happy and pleased with what they saw from him during the spring. You give that Achilles, that body, six more weeks to recover, and August rolls around. If he's looking good in practice, they're just not going to need to see it in preseason games. So maybe preseason week three, we see some Kirk Cousins. Random edits. Should the Falcons trade for Dallas Turner? <laughs> no. The Vikings are not trading Dallas Turner. So I hate to disappoint, but... Not happening. I don't know if you guys did see this, though. Dallas Turner did throw out the first pitch at a Minnesota Twins game along with J.J. McCarthy. They were just a bit outside. All right. Uh, we got one more question or the last one. I think it's the last one. All right. That would do it for us on today's show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our mailbag. If there's a question you want to ask, join us every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern, and we'll get you involved in our mailbag episodes. 